Everybody was usually uh, stunned, I think, and usually saddened by, by the news on, on Thursday about uh, Her Majesty. Like, like everybody in the country, you know, there was a fairly, there was a fairly somber mood in camp when we, when we got in on, on Friday. Uh, and, you know, people wanted to talk about, about it. And, you know, uh, Helen, our psychologist, reached out to the players, let them know there's support there if anybody wanted to, to speak. One of the, um, the things that we've, we've talked about this week with the players is the fact that the loss of the Queen um, can trigger grief responses. She's a figure who's been a constant in people's lives, their whole lives. Um, so people may be experiencing feelings that surprise them, feelings that they're not necessarily expecting, and those feelings could possibly go on for longer than they would expect. Also, other people may be experiencing feelings about the Queen that people are surprised by. So for me personally, it's quite tough. Like I just got back from a few days away with my son Oliver for his birthday, and we were sat on the co uh, on the couch knowing that the Queen was obviously ill. But actually, to listen to the news reporter and to hear that she had died was quite an emotional um, moment for me personally. I I had a little cry. Um, the national anthem was being played and I sung, stood up and sung it, which is a bit silly, but I did it and it's just really sad. I know on a couple of WhatsApp groups I'm on, people are very emotional about it. For me, I've only know, ever known a queen, uh, only known the national anthem is God Save Our Queen. So this week running out at Ashton Gate and be singing a different national anthem is, is a moment in history, but something I guess that will, will last forever for me. Last full session for us, yeah? Make sure we do it the England way. We have attention and focus on detail of our execution. Our individual responsibility of what your role is in the session, yeah? We leave everything out on this pitch now, yeah? Collected together as the Red Roses. Let's go. Rose on red! Red! Roses! Don't forget, when we get over there, don't forget days like this. Do not forget sessions like that. When everybody is giving everything, because if we set that intensity, that level of physicality and commitment, in every game we play when we get out of there, there'll only be one outcome, all right? But only if we do that. So don't forget about sessions like today, when everybody is giving everything. Hey, hey, hey! hey, hey, hey. The general public need to see more than they ever saw before in terms of insights into how performance sport works and, and uh, you know, we wanted to do that. We wanted to share what, what we do and we wanted, we wanted people to see just how hard this team work. My name is Richard Cook. I'm a documentary maker. Previously I've made documentaries such as Sunderland Till I Die for Netflix, Juventus All or Nothing for Amazon and a feature film last year on the fallout of the European Super League. So I took on this project because I've worked quite a bit in the past with male elite sports teams and I was interested to find out a bit more about uh, women's elite sport. It feels like the, the momentum is building now in women's sport. 
I wanted to see really at first hand how they're raising the bar, how they're raising standards, how other nations are going to have to raise their standards in order to compete uh, with the England team. They actually followed me home, so I had a GoPro attached to my car and a massive camera in my passenger seat, which was quite funny. Um, and then just see me arrive home to, to meet Oliver. Um, it was just really nice um, that they captured that. Obviously, I've not watched the documentary yet, so uh, I'm super excited for it to come out. Just to not just watch, obviously, myself, but the whole squad. We spend so much time together um, in these environments, but it's to see people in different environments and like their whys of why they're here and what they're doing and I think this will catch the players when they're they're not so like on it more of the off guard seeing them at their, at their true selves I guess. I've always felt at every stage that we've been made to feel incredibly welcome and part of the team and, and actually it's been very easy for us to be able to do our jobs alongside that of the team and the staff. It's, it's been unbelievably well filmed and it's, you know, the crew have been incredibly respectful of, of what we're trying to do and they've really immersed themselves in our, in our sort of culture and, and been incredibly sensitive to, to the right moments and, and the product is fantastic, I think. It truly reflects us as a squad and it reflects the individuals within the squad and it's something that uh, I think we'll be as proud of as, as hopefully the film crew are of putting it together because they've done a great job and Richard and his team have been, have been fantastic to work with and just great people people as well, really good fun. And, and you can see, certainly at the USA game, they were, they, they were, they were packed pretty close uh, and they were applauding everything and getting out of the seat. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think they've really come to sort of love the squad. It takes an awful lot of work, an awful lot of man hours filming, setting up shoots, looking at various storylines um, to, to put this together. But hopefully what we've created is, is something that feels like a you know, quite an intense journey at times. There are a lot of laughs along the way, but hopefully there are some, some highs and lows. But ultimately, what it will give you is a, a really interesting and engaging insight into how the Red Roses build up to a big tournament. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number of caps we've got in the room, okay? Or, tw or, or the 23 who are playing the game, all right? So let's use that experience tonight. Let's really show that, not just in terms of our temperament, but in how we want to play the game. What that 1,080 caps have learned since we started playing, yeah? It's gonna be a great night. It's gonna be a great night for us. Let's make sure we send ourselves off how we want and we send the crowd away really happy and wanting to, to tune in on the 8th. Yeah, and see what we're up to. One game left for these players to make sure that they will be part of the squads that fly to New Zealand. Harrison with some width to Ruben and and space and opportunity. Now one of England's super strengths, but they take it quickly. Packer to Scarra to score. Finta, well strong with a bag full of problems. England have shut them off the board. It's a penalty try. Now surely weight of numbers. And the fullback, Ellie Kildarn skates over. To end this first half on a high for England. Real simple method for second half, yeah. Everything on our terms, that breakdown determines and dictates how we play, yeah. 40 minutes to finish the way we want, yeah. The England way. Let's go, girls. Throws on red. Red! red. red. Drive, Alex Matthews can 
continues to drive. And England flying towards New Zealand. For the first time in Test Rugby, a team have won 25 in a row. And in the end, Wales rather outclassed by England. 11 tries to one. Next stop for both, an aeroplane to Auckland. Everyone around the squad is a little bit more on edge. Uh, you know, training in itself has been up there because it, they know it's going to be the last time that they're going to have any kind of impact in what the coaches are thinking. It's been a very tough process for a long time, you know, because you, you analyse everybody's performance in terms of uh, training more than playing because obviously we haven't played that much. So it's not just about the games and the players know it's not just about the games. Is it the toughest selection ever? Yeah, we actually have a shadow of a doubt because it's it's the best squad we've ever had in terms of uh, the depth of the squad and the depth of quality. You know, we've had fantastic players in, in the past. But what we have got is a group of players who offer quality down to three or four in almost every position. And you, know, you can't take three or four in every position. So that's the challenge for us, but it's a great challenge. I think to somebody who's, who, who's being told that they're not selected, there's very little you can say. I, I, I think there's, you have to give them the news probably have to keep the conversation short so they can they can go away and reflect then we'll give them some thinking time some breathing space and then we'll come back with, with another conversation about why that decision may be that decision uh, or has been that decision and and that's if the players want it it's very important that the, the players receive the news and, and discuss it on their terms uh, i'd like to think most players know where they stand before the decisions are made. I think because there are a couple of real close 50-50 calls, it will be, uh, it could possibly be a surprise to some players either way. Uh, but I think either way, the players will be preparing themselves for the best and the worst. Selection is a really, really difficult thing to work on with players because it's one of the biggest uncontrollables in sport. So, so much of the decision making around selection is not within the player's control. My job as team psychologist is to help support them with that uncertainty. So one of the things that I did was to record some of the players' thoughts and feelings around selection. We listen to the coaches' stories about experiences that they've had in the past where they've not been selected for big tournaments or big games. And I kind of put it together with some psychology in there around how to deal with those uncontrollables, how to manage your emotions around the difficult time that selection brings. The idea was it, it was a resource that players can refer back to, that they can listen to in their own time and help themselves to try and manage this difficult period that we're in. As a, as a coaching group, we've all been through it. We've all been through really tough selections. The selection process is quite dramatic for everybody, but we do feel it. Uh, we feel it like they do, but ultimately, uh, and there's not much you can say to somebody who misses out on a spot. We can only take 32 to New Zealand and, you know, players will be left behind, but they are a massive part of this next bit of the journey. and. Like you never know what's going to happen and anything can happen so always being ready to to be ready to go at any time it's a very long tournament and players will be on standby and they they need to make sure they're doing their very best and once they're past the disappointment they can sustain that level of preparation and be ready to be called up mm -hmm.